Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. It's Taskmaster Tuesday, which means that we're going to be doing some crazy challenges. And this is not something that I do on my own. I have my companions slash adversaries here linked down below in the description for other content creators. Now this time around, we are playing as a privateer. Um, it's an interesting challenge. It's going to make for uh, potentially a lot of money in the sense that uh, the more expensive the battleship that we sink, the more points that we gain. Now, here's how it works. Our score is the profit that we make on the battle. The total cost of the enemy ships sunk minus the cost of our own ships sunk. And Brother Monroe wrote this up. He says, I doubt we'll need a tiebreaker, but just in case, it's the combined remaining structure of all your ships. So repairs, co repairs cost money after all. Um, this means that for this week, I can pick any five ships of any type. Or rather, I can pick five ships of any type. Um, so five of the same class. The starting range is going to be 20,000 meters, and I can pick any nation and any year. And on top of that, I can use unlock all. The enemy is going to be any other nation, any year that is equal to or greater than the year of our own fleet. They will have five battleships. Now, I am considering... You know what? I'm just going to do it. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to 1890. The golden age of piracy with torpedo boats. Torpedo boats could could have an interesting risk reward here because these things are dirt cheap. They're the cheapest type of ships that you can find and that comes because they are not very survivable. So in this case I'm going to be designing a torpedo boat and I'm hopefully going to be getting some nice plunder from enemy battleships. Now the idea how this works is um, I'm looking at this cost 233,806 that's the cost that it takes for me to get one of these ships. So the uh, final number is something that I'm going to do times five. And that'll be my, let's say my total investment of my privateer fleet. And then we're going to have a look at what the enemy brings in. And you can see in a battle what sort of price tag those things have. Before I forget, by the way, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I am on the way to getting 70,000 subs. And subscribing would really help me out. So if you are interested in naval stuff, um, naval tactics, naval strategy, uh, war game, stuff like that, then by all means, welcome to the channel. Now, for this ship, um, it's going to be hard to, <laughs> to balance this thing out. Uh, I already have. I have four torpedoes per launcher. But I think that I cannot afford that. I can afford three per launcher, but then even then the ship is still too heavy. <laughs> Come on. There's nothing else I can boost here. Um, I still need to, to set a funnel, I'm afraid, for seven tons. Yeah, we're still overweight. So I would probably need to reduce speed a bit more. But that's a problem because speed is life for these little things. Still doing 26 knots in 19, sorry, in 1890 is probably quite a feat. It's probably quite a lot of speed for that era. Let's shuffle that funnel around. Put the torpedo launcher over there. I want you sitting far back. And we're gonna put this thing. Hold on. I only need a really, really simple tower because I'm not looking to use my guns. That's why I only put on a two-inch gun. Oh. Yes, please. That allows me six torpedoes. Um, maybe launching them in a row is better. Now, normally, of course, you would argue that you don't need to be sinking enemy shipping. You want to capture it. That, of course, is going to give you the most reward. In this case, though, we are pirates of a slightly different breed, I suppose. Privateers, rather. And our objective is simple. Eliminate the enemy warship. Nope, too heavy. Armor is not even equipable on these things. Now, they are very maneuverable. 
very well pretty quick for that day and age 26 knots they have a turning circle of 256 they're as small as they can be um because i cannot even build them beyond 200 tons so the cogne uh, it, i guess it's as good as it's going to get oh hold on uh if i can put this yeah that just saved me one ton oof really that's 15 tons for one torpedo? Because I can get three of them for 25 tons, including a launcher. Damn. Okay. So be it, I guess. Range on these is only 900 meters. Now, this is something that could be over really quickly, depending, of course, on how much of a secondary armament the battleship is going to have. If it has a lot of secondary guns, uh, or rather, in their case, casemate guns, then it's, well, it's going to be a tricky experience, shall we say. Now, I'm going to write this down. This is a price tag of $321,148. So, I need to do that times five, and that's my investment. And now we can launch. Let's see what sort of battleship they brought. I cannot see them yet because they're all the way to the north, which is actually not bad because it means I have some time to line up my formation. Uh, I have two formations. I want all of these in one group. There. All right, please line yourselves up. There's no time tiebreaker, so I can take as long as I need to line up my formation and thus my attack. And set you back to 16 knots, allow the rest to line up. Now, why formation abreast? Because I normally don't use this. Formation abreast is going to allow these things to more or less arrive at the target at the same time. I'm fully expecting to lose at least one, and probably more. But by going on the offensive with all of them at the same time, I'm hoping to overwhelm any sign of or any kind of uh, counters that the enemy might have. Whereas if I arrive one by one, they're just going to pick them off one by one. Now, I know I'm not heading the right way. I'm just giving the uh, the other Cognés a bit of time to line up. Give me a tight formation here, gentlemen. It's been a while since I used torpedo boats, and I like these little things. So if I can get an opportunity to use them, then by all means. Uh, that is a really tight formation there, sir. There we go. They're now 400 meters apart. Still enemy smoke to the north. I still need the T4 to line up. But I suppose we can already start heading in that direction. T3 is doing a bit of maneuvering to maintain her spot. A bit too much maneuvering, in fact. And no, we don't have a collision, but that was close. Right. Where can we expect them? I don't have a radio locator. Radar has not yet been invented. So I couldn't possibly tell you where the enemy is. I don't know what my engine efficiency is, by the way. Torpedo speed, 25 knots. So the torpedo is actually slower than my own ship. Oh, hold on a moment. Enemy warship detected. Range, 5.8 kilometers out. I've spotted them, they haven't spotted me. Now, while these little things are still in one piece, I'm going to take a screenshot of them. Because I will need some sort of thumbnail for this. And considering how quickly they might die, well, we're going to need a pretty quick screenshot to at least uh, pass something on to the next generation, shall we say. Or at least to the thumbnail. Okay, these guys are coming at me in a line, and now they have spotted me, and they're engaging. But considering the terrible accuracy of this error, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they can't really hurt me yet. Yet. That's the emphasis. I'm also interested to see how expensive their ships are, which is something that you can see once you hover over it. Okay, gentlemen, uh, new plan. Detach from the division. So 
Swarm attack commencing. Torpedoes denied. One of them is taking fire, as expected. Well, I mean, they were taking fire for a while. One of them is taking damage. 81. Increase the flank. Full ahead flank. Full ahead flank. There we go. Identification on the enemy has been completed. We are looking at the battleship Colorado. The Colorado has a price tag. Look at that. These things are $6.1 million a pop. So that makes them 20 times more valuable than one of my PT boats. So if I can sink them, well, that's going to really rack up the score. The problem, of course, will be to get into range. And um, it's not just the 10-inch guns that are firing at me. It's also their, well, large assortment of 5-inch guns and... Uh, just a modest two, three inch guns. These things already have a, an accuracy of 2% and it's going to get progressively worse for me as we get closer. Alright. Um, you're going to head that way together with you. Now these things have some bulkheads on them. But it remains to be seen whether that's going to be enough to stop these things. Because I have to get to 900 meters. Which is... Pretty damn close. Especially considering what the enemy is throwing at me. Oh dear. As long as this guy can serve as a bullet magnet, perfect. The T3 can then rush in. And same can uh, the T4. Turn. Head that way, head that way. Range 1-5. Now, I haven't really checked what sort of uh, price tags versus rewards I could get if I go for a higher tier. But I imagine that if you go for, uh, let's say, 1940s battles, your ships get more expensive, but so do theirs. So if you are able to sink a couple of battleships at high tier with a couple of destroyers, then you're probably going to end up with a pretty good score this week. Uh-oh, this guy's not going to make it. Turn and torp. I put it at one time speed because I can barely keep up here. This is going to be a very easy dodge. So I'm going to try and pincer the Utah over there. Come on. At least drop it before you go out. Interestingly, the T2 survived. And that's something that I find really impressive about these little things. They're capable of absorbing a ton of damage, flooding, burning, and still come out alive by some miracle. Come on, you're gonna have to turn harder. Torpedo away. Oh, I don't mean to ram you though. Whoa! No! The whole drive me closer, I want to hit them with my sword would line up with the privateer part, but I think it's not quite going to play out as I hoped. Of course, it's still surprising that the ship is alive in the first place. Because a battleship driving over a torpedo boat should immediately kill the torpedo boat. Now we have a torpedo coming out of the T3, linking up with the Dakota. And it looks like we might have a hit there. Utah, however, uh, flooding, but definitely not dead yet. Yeah, that torpedo is going to hit the North Dakota. The problem with the T2 is that while it's still alive, it has suffered a lot of engine damage. And thereby cannot be expected to move into range very quickly. Now at this rate, I might be able to damage a few. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to live to tell the tale. And if I don't sink any, that means no points. Utah is having a rough time. Flood at the 37% buoyancy. 
Come on, T4. Turn that torpedo tube over. Come on. Sent. We reload in five minutes. That is very quick. Normally it takes them far longer. Now, the Cogni T2 cannot maneuver very quickly, but maybe she can intercept the Utah. If the Utah isn't sunk by the T1, that is. Because she has sustained serious flooding on her stern. Oh, sorry, on her bow. But if I can hit her in, in the stern, that would be great. It doesn't look like this torpedo is really going to hit, though. I might not have lined that shot up properly. We also have the Nebraska out there, but shouldn't be... Yeah, this is not going to work out at all. Uh, the T2, I'm going to need you to do some miracle work here. And the T3 is still reloading. T4 is still reloading. We're going to make these things difficult. Difficult to hit. T4, T3, I need you guys to survive. We still have the North Dakota to finish off. Which you might need to steer towards, as you're loaded in about two minutes. The T4 is going to take another four minutes, most likely. Oh shit, I'm going to torp myself at this rate. Hold on, it was the T2 that had its engines damaged, didn't it? Yep, engine repaired. Heroic. Perfect effort here. The T1, however... Well, let's hope that their repair crews are as good. Oh, this is not good. These things can take a beating. 1,000 points of damage taken. Okay. Yeah, there goes the three. Torpedo away from the T2. Oh! <laughs> Point three? <laughs> there she goes. Now, maybe the Utah is going to sink after taking another torpedo here. Hopefully. Because then I at least might get some points. Not a lot, but some. The T4 is still reloading. Colorado and North Dakota both make for really juicy targets. Just need these things to live long enough. How's your flooding, uh, Utah? 35% buoyancy and dropping. T2 is starting to take some damage. See, on the one hand, I want to get close. On the other hand, I don't. Because the farther away I get, the more difficult I am to hit. Looks like Utah's dead in the water. And working to kill me on the T2. T4. Oh, we're going to need a bit more time to load. Oops, that was my Facebook. Come on, give me another two minutes of lifetime. This is, of course, where the RNG comes in. I was hoping to see battleships that had few or minimum bulkheads. These guys don't quite have that. They have standard bulkheads. Which, as you can see, is enough to keep them alive. If these had minimum bulkheads, they might have flooded out. Might have. I'm under attack from both the Kentucky, North Dakota, and the Colorado. And the sailors on these ships are hard at work to make sure that there's no water inside the ship. Although they seem to be lacking in their effort on the bow of the North Dakota, so that's where I want to hit them. Just hope that the T4 is going to not take one big hit from the 10-inch guns and sink. Come on. Torpedo boats probably weren't that good of an idea after all. Hold. Because this thing is turning away and I don't want to hit him on the stern again because they're already flooded there. Ow. Now you can launch. Hopefully hit him somewhere in the bow. Come on. Torp away. Torp away. Number two. 
Still loading. Torpedo hit him in the bows. North Dakota flooding on three compartments. The T4 is going to have to make a really close exit past the Colorado. Sinking! One battleship is dead. Looks like the Utah is going to need some more persuading. She's not done for yet. Torpedo is pretty much loaded at this point. I don't need to hit the bow on the Utah. I need to hit the stern. Oh, dear. T4 is pretty much toast. Pretty much toast. Her whole stern's on fire. Launch. You know what, we're going to have to do a drive-by here, because I don't trust my torpedoes not to miss at this range. Turn, turn, turn. Oh shit, you launched? Oh, okay. Turn away. Turn away, turn away, turn away. Do it now. We're going to hit him right in the stern, exactly where I want him. Somewhere over there. Bingo. Turn! We only have one torp left. Utah! Sunk. Excellent. So that's already two of their battleships gone. For the price of four of my torpedo boats. So I have spent, let's say, uh, rounded 1.5 million. And I've sunk 12 million. 12.2 million. So I'm already up about 11 million. Um, sorry, 10.7 million. But I think, yeah, this is the end. So, um, I think that this can be beat, in retrospect, pretty easily, because here's what you can do. If you go to 1940, and I would say use a couple of destroyers, this is not part of my attempt, by the way. I'm going to go with the IGN. Let's say that I want to have an experimental destroyer and I'm going to torp their battleship into oblivion. I would need a small uh, main gun, just because I have to. I need a funnel. This, this thing doesn't even need to be fast. Like 34 knots is fine, because I can stay out of torpedo range. Electric torps. What? It's not even full yet? I thought I'm just going to plunk these things down and we'll we'll see when the ship turns red. Well, so far it hasn't. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's 30 torpedo launchers on a destroyer. Good lord. Okay. Everything here is going to make the ship more expensive. Which in this case I don't even need. Range, not important. Speed, not important. I could drop it down more. Hold on. Is this really going to be as nuts as I think it can be? Yes. Yes, it is. This is a torpedo boat. In the purest form. <laughs> I have an aft weight offset. That's probably going to tilt the whole thing backwards before she even gets out of the dock. But hey, what we do have is 40 torpedo launchers. <laughs> you could launch 40 torpedoes from this. Okay, so let's say that I would use this. This is 19.9 million. And I would do that times five. What sort of battleship would I be able to fight against? Let's see what they have. 26 knots on a destroyer. I've seen battleships go faster than that. Again, this is absolutely not part of my attempt. I'm just curious to see what sort of, let's say, price ratio you could get. Whoa! Hold on there, sir. We're... We're... Jesus, we're just getting acquainted. Stop killing me. 
Suzutsuki is toast. Or at least is, um, well, well and true out of this fight. This is the problem if you go into 1940 and don't bring a radar or any kind of better detection equipment. I can't see them. I can tell you more or less where they are at about 15 to 17 kilometer range. But that's the extent of it. And there goes the... <laughs> the Fuitsuki. <laughs> so far, only minimal hits. To the tune that they've only hit me three times. But accurate as all hell. Oh. <laughs> this is why destroyers have speed as life <laughs> as their motto. Because if you make these things go 26 knots, they won't even get into range. Hold on. Oh crap, I should have not gone with that. Oh well. Um, I need at least radar to see what's going on. Long range spotting is what I need. Tower spotting, 1750, 1250. I'm, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that mascot of a two-inch gun. All of it. Electric. Quad launchers. One, two, three, four. Uh, funnel. One of them is complaining about their firing angles. Yeah, well... Deal with it. I'm also going to need a secondary tower. Okay, fine. I'll put it where you want it. And uh, these are 228, so I cannot put another one. Error. Mount 2. Some parts are badly placed. There. Okay. Torpedo launchers, 35. We had to slim down somewhat, but not a terrible amount. The cost of these ships is now not 19.9, it's now 18.8. Let's see if I can find the enemy like this. Enemy north. I have spotted smoke. I'm not seeing any notification that I've been spotted. Come on. It looks from the picture like they have cage masts. They have spotted me. Great. Come on, give me some spotting. I'm getting radar returns, but I need visual. I need to see one of the buggers. 13.2 kilometer range torps only. Oh yeah, it's because they're electrics. 13 inch gun? Okay. Well, last time they were using something a lot bigger than that. A lot bigger because they almost cut the destroyer in half with the first hit. Come on. Smoke screen's out in 60 seconds. Range. There. Now we have to live long enough to identify the ship. That's going to be a whole different challenge. Oh, and we got a couple of DDs just leaving the match. 12%. Range. 13-2. That means that you're effectively inside of torpedo range, but you're heading away from it. Crap. So what are you guys sporting? 8 13 inch guns, 14 6 inch. No thanks. Can I opt out? 13 6 inch, come on. Sorry, 14 6 inch. I need to see what these things are made of. 37% ID. 40, 42, 43, 44. Come on. What are these things like? 
crap. Well, I guess this wouldn't be the best plan either. It's something that I do frequently on Taskmaster. I think, you know what, this might work, and this is probably going to maximize my chances of winning. But I tend to go for the bonus objective too quickly. Um, I tend to go for the biggest reward as possible without even being able to pull off the main objective. Although, this time around, I got a decent, decent score, I think. Really curious to see what the others went with. And who knows, maybe it's safe to build a relatively small battleship with big guns and see if you can sink the enemy ship. If they have, let's say, knots. Well, if they have 20-inch guns, they're going to be valuable, but you might not be able to sink them. Much like I probably won't be able to spot what the price on these things is before I'm getting killed off. So there's an army that way. These things are carrying 105 torpedoes. That means that the whole ship is basically one big torpedo. Everything below decks, torpedoes. Latrines, bunks, no, we have torpedoes here. You can stand, or well, you can sleep standing up. 75%, this thing is going to die. 78 Come on. 82. Eighty-eight. Buoyancy's coming back. Ninety-three. Come on. Got him. Virginia. See these cost eighty million. So there's potentially 400 million up for grabs, and I paid mm, about 95 million. So the way that I did it was terrible, because I lost all of my ships um, for, let me do the exact math. All right, the exact score. Um, I made in my piracy attack, if you will, 10,594,260. Uh, if one of these destroyers survives, or maybe not even that, let's say you lose all of them, that's rounded up 95 million lost. And these things cost 80 million, so you, you'd be hard pressed to make a profit here. Anyway, time will tell, or rather the links down below in the description will tell how the other guys did. Very interesting challenge. Props to Brother Monroe for coming up with this thing. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do next week. Again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you soon for the next one.